at a great school at William & Mary. So Coach E up against Coach Kenny Brooks. And here we are, William & Mary in the black, Hokies in the white, and we are underway with Georgia Amor taking down the tip off. And then a quick turnover. Here comes William & Mary, fresh off of a win against Longwood. Another turnover again. Hokies trying to push the pace here. Kayla King, too short. Here comes Matilda Eck off of a big game against Rutgers. Kittling trying to fight through a double team, and instead the ball falls out to Bella Nascimento. A really scrappy team, William and Mary. They, they get after you. They run a lot of good stuff on offense, a little bit undersized. We'll, we'll see if that becomes a big factor in this game. Nyla Young, the Hampton transfer. This is on the three, and the Hokies pull it down. Young a little bit under the weather. We didn't know whether she was going to play here tonight. Really a talented player, their best player. Scored 20 points in just 13 minutes in their last game. Well, that was such a big win for William & Mary against Longwood. Meanwhile, Matilda Eck, who had such a stellar game against Rutgers, coming back here to Blacksburg. Missing the three there. She had 25 points, seven out of 13 uh, from long range. She had six assists, no turnovers, five rebounds. Meanwhile, the tray falls for Nascimento, the junior from Grafton, Mass, and a transfer from Manhattan. She's their best three-point threat. She's not shooting a great percentage, only 32, but she can really get going. Kitley trying to back in. Hook shot can't go. Of offensive woes starting for the Hokies here in the first minute and a half. As McKeska runs the point. Becca Frisbee Smith on the Euro step lobs it up. Eck able to fight through it and possession stays with a try. Yeah, Hokies off to a slow start as you mentioned. On the offensive end for sure. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of options for Kenny Brooks, and uh, you got to think that they'll get going on the offensive end. And we saw those options really flourish for Virginia Tech against Rutgers. 17 threes against the Scarlet Knights as the shot clock gets recalibrated. In a game where some of the more unlikely faces stood out for Virginia Tech, Matilda Eck has been a starter for the Hokies, but Olivia Summiel added 18 points off of the bench. Georgia Amor way too hard on that three. And you mentioned the slow start. Virginia Tech averages almost 80 points a game in the top 30 nationally. Only two losses for the Hokies up against final four teams from a season ago, including the defending national champions down in Baton Rouge. Nascimento. Just one shot has fallen for both teams so far in this one as Amor continues to push the pace. That's where Kenny Brooks dials up. Famous for these offensive sets that isolates the matchup that he wants. There's Rose Mishaw. Shot clock down to seven. Kayla King lets it fly. Mishaw comes in to try to get the rebound and crashes with the ball flying out to Nascimento. Good job by William Mary boxing out. Nyla Young left wide open and nicks the front end of the rim. That was 0 for 4 coming into this game from long range. She's taken a couple already. Meanwhile, the Hokies have yet to hit a shot. Liz Kitley gets fouled on the offensive board. Matchup of Nyla Young and Liz Kitley. Seven inches difference in their height. Wow. They go about their business completely differently. Young already uh, takes a seat. You wonder if that's related to uh, her not feeling well. Yeah, it, that's got to be a really tall task, Mac, for Nyla Young coming off of a week where she's dealt with illness and then you have to go and take on the two time defending ACC Player of the Year in her own house. Placed by number three, Caleb Beckwith, 6'1 senior. Lob it into Kitley, and another foul is drawn. This time on Frisbee Smith. Another Australian on the floor. Frisbee Smith coming from Adelaide. Georgia Amor from Victoria, Australia. Here's Eck 
Uncorking a three and misses. Boy, the Hokies are cold to start out here. Yeah. Some wide open looks. It hadn't been for lack of getting good shots. No Virginia Tech starting out 0 for 8 from the field. Meanwhile, William and Mary just one for six. Beckwith's first touch of the ball game. And Cemento has already hit a couple of triples. Yeah, the Manhattan transfer. We, she's really great from about 15 feet, but she's still their best three-point shooter. Kayla King gets the Hokies on the board. And knocked the lid off down here. See if that gets the Hokies going. William Mary's done a good job so far of only allowing the Hokies one shot. So cuts the lead in half, all three so far in this one. And turns to Nascimento. Long rebound, Georgia Amor. Outnumbered. Transition three. Virginia Tech from beyond the arc has started out with one for seven. We've seen this before out of the Hokies. Risby Smith, oh, that's unlucky. Risby Smith she really likes to shoot those threes. Only shoots 24%, but she kind of hunts those threes. Really good athlete, great decision maker. Yeah, eight for 34 on the season for Risby Smith, so... There's a lot of threes being taken for the senior from Australia. Another turnover. Fast break for Nascimento to the glass. Nascimento averages 13 points a game. She's off to a great start. She also leads the team in assists with 32. Uncharacteristic slow start for the Hokies. Liz Kitley thought about the three for just a moment. King again. There's some contact there, and that will bring us to a break. William & Mary leading early here in the first quarter. 8-3, Tribe are up over the Hokies early in this one. Well, as we've already noted, Virginia Tech's head coach, Kenny Brooks, has had a great week. And for more on that, we go over to Kendall Williams. Kendall? Thanks, Bailey. Yeah, guys, what a week it's been for Virginia Tech head coach Kenny Brooks as he secured his 500th career win this past Sunday against Rutgers up in Piscataway. The team celebrated after the game in the locker room wearing custom t-shirts with Coach Brooks' name and the number 500 on them. Coach Brooks came into the locker room and first saw his wife, Chrissy, shared a special moment with her just before the rest of the team began the water throwing celebrations. Sure was a special day for Coach Brooks, and to add even more excitement to the week, he celebrated his 55th birthday yesterday. Guys? Uh, thanks for that, Kendall. Yeah, such a big week for Kenny Brooks and has made such a huge difference in not only basketball, women's basketball here in Blacksburg, but the entire New River Valley region. As we see now for the Hokies, getting a defensive stop right out of the break. Virginia Tech started out from the field, one for 11. Just one shot has fallen so far. That was from Kayla King. Here's Matilda Eck, trying to break the curse. Another long rebound to Nascimento. And one, Nascimento is having herself a first quarter. 10 points already, all of William and Mary's points. Kayla King has all of Virginia Tech's, but that's just three points. So what a start by Bella Nascimento. The Manhattan transfer, that is not an easy play, and she got it to go off of the glass. Trying to complete the old-fashioned three-point play here. And she does, 11 to three. Mac, what is Virginia Tech doing wrong here? Uh, just not making shots. I mean, I don't think Kenny Brooks has any problem with the shots they've been taking. Uh, they have not been able to establish anything inside despite the height advantage, and I'm sure he would like to change that around. William Mary doing a good job of being physical. They knock Liz Kitley off her route to post up and, of course, surround her like that when they double-teamed her when she got the basketball. Well, the transfer from Villanova, Anahi Cauley, forcing the tie-up. Possession arrow stays the way of Virginia Tech. Well, this has been a strong suit for the Hokies in the past in these baseline out-of-bounds plays. And it's a bit harder here. Yeah, William Mary defended that really well. 
Kind of a double team. Loose ball. There's Nascimento. And miscommunication there and a drawn foul. That goes on Cassidy Geddes. So the freshman comes into the game, gets booked with a foul, and Virginia Tech a little bit of room to breathe here on this offensive possession. But like we've said, one for 12 for the Hokies. They've already shot nine threes as well. Kitley gets her first bucket to fall. And that's exactly what Kenny Brooks will do. He'll change the angle. He'll move people around, make it harder for William and Mary to double team Liz Kitley. That's exactly one of the big reasons he has 500 victories. Cemento misses the mid-range, and it goes to Virginia Tech. Four rebounds for Liz Kitley. Needs nine more to break the all-time record, not only in Virginia Tech history, but ACC history. Reagan McCarty has that stat, a former Virginia Tech Hokie, all-time ACC leader in rebounds. Kitley needs nine more to become that today. Harris Baker misses. Looks like she'll get another chance here. And now going to the line, the freshman from Connecticut. Good to see Karis Baker being aggressive going to the rim. We know that she really can shoot the basketball from the perimeter and uh, showing a little diversity in her game right there. It's scoreless against Rutgers, but Harris Baker's had a couple of big games here in Blacksburg where she's been able to shoot a good amount of threes in open situations for Virginia Tech. And gets on the scoreboard here. Just had 18 points and four rebounds, both career highs against LIU. Of course, the daughter of Ben Baker. I'll tell you what, Karis Baker did not take that much time to think about that free throw. That is one of the quicker free throws I've seen taken by a basketball player here in quite some time. Just one dribble and threw it up. She hit both. Get us the freshman with a wild three. Here goes Amor right to the rim. Gets fouled hard out of the line for two. Oh, Amor pushing the tempo went straight in on this one, Matt. Yeah, and, and one of the things you want to do when you're not shooting the ball well is try to get some high percentage looks. One way to do that is in transition when you have numbers. So for all of Virginia Tech shooting just about 80%. Started out here four for four today. Georgia, Georgia Amor, of course, at 88%. Along with Liz Kitley at that same number. That helps when your best players can really shoot free throws. Liz Kitley snatches another board. Samuel, open for just a moment, not long enough to take the shot. Amor will. Tracks down her own rebound. Quick darting passes for Virginia Tech. Good job by Beck with being real physical. Kitley to the rim and now back to the line for the Hokies. Yeah, Kitley. That's why she's the two-time ACC Player of the Year. Just takes her time. She knows she has an advantage, despite the fact that Beckwith really did a good job right there of owning that space. So the Hokies have a chance to tie it here. It was 11-3. The small Virginia Tech run, primarily fueled by three throws. So trying to make it now a my game and does. So 11-11 as Virginia Tech fights back. 8-0 run for the Hokies. There's a track here at the end of the first quarter giving Liz Kitley a little bit of a blow. Between that and the quarter break, Liz Kitley will get some rest. Ayla King, long rebound. Outnumbered. Find some help in Baker. See what the freshman can do here. Clara Strack finds the square. What a play. You, know, you, you, you hesitate to say superlatives very much, but Clara Strack's going to be really, really good. Now the heir apparent to being the center for Virginia Tech. The Hokies 
Haven't had to find a new five since 2019. Loose ball, Amor is there for a moment, and a scrum, Strack got it. Kayla King, Baker's wide open. Shot clock now off. A sophomore from California, McKeska, dribbling it out to see if William and Mary can tie it up or take the lead going into the second quarter. Nascimento. In and out, and back in. What a three, what a first quarter. Amor, a bit short on the heave. 14-13, William and Mary leading going into the second quarter. We got a fun, the charity stripe, and that is how this is a close one. There's McKeska with a kick out to Nascimento. It's short again, Strack is there. The Hokies changed. Put uh, Matilda Eck on Nascimento that time, but uh, enough switches occurred. She had someone else on her at the end. Now, what adjustments do you think Virginia Tech has to make here to compete in the second quarter? Well, obviously, uh, they need to do a good job of locating Nascimento, who's just really, really hot. But on the offensive end, just, just share the basketball and continue to execute. It's into Kitley. And a size mismatch there and works it to her advantage. The Hokies gradually taking advantage of that size. And, and Wynton Mary has done a nice job of battling her on the post, double teaming on occasion, being real physical on occasion. Now the Young is under the hoop. Young's a tough matchup for Kitley, but so far hasn't had much production. There's Georgia. Amor just chucked that thing up against the glass. How many times have we seen Tech struggling at any point in the game, and Georgia Amor just take over. Wenzel tried to draw a charge, not Cemento. Now she continues to shoot. Five for 11 now. And she's taken 11 of 20 attempts that William & Mary has total. Kitley spins and scores. Yeah. That's just such a mismatch right there. If they don't come and double team, and that time the spacing was such that they couldn't get there in time, Liz Kitley is almost automatic in that situation. Nyla Young thinks, why not take a three? A big lineup now for Virginia Tech with Strack and Kitley both on the floor. Young now 0 for 7 on the year from long range, but clearly that's something they feel confident that she can handle. Quick feed inside, and Strack misses. Little reversal of rolls. Kitley with the high post pass down to Strack in the low post. So one thing about Clara Strack, she can play three, to play, play the four or the five. The Strack has gotten a good amount of playing time for the Hokies here in non-conference play. Between her and Karis Baker, two freshmen that have gotten a significant amount of burn along with Carly Wenzel, the redshirt freshman. And this is the last game before league play begins. So New Year's Eve, Hokies come back to Castle Coliseum, take on the Pitt Panthers. The back iron. Georgia Amor, the lane opened up but couldn't finish. Feed inside, and Kayla Rolfe, the sophomore from Virginia, able to lay it up and in. Yeah, Rolfe can shoot the basketball. That's what she's known for, but ran the floor really well that time. Beat Strack down the floor, much to the chagrin of Coach Brooks. So the first member of this William & Mary roster to score against Virginia Tech, that was in Nascimento. Kitley puts it back on the deck amidst three defenders, gets the ball back again, and then loses it. William & Mary has played Liz Kitley tough here in the first half. Yeah, uh, given away a lot of inches, but they've been physical with her. They've double teamed her at some point, and that time, as you mentioned, pretty much triple teamed her after the offensive rebound. Okay, 
as Lee Gaddis. Back with try, trying to slow the Hokies down. Nahi Kali gets blocked by Strack. Here comes Carly Wenzel running the point. Once again, a double team. Matilda Eck trying to pick up the pieces there, but air balls. And again, that, that's a shot that you want Matilda Eck to take if you're Kenny Brooks. Wenzel trying to work a hand in defensively. Linda Mary wants that to count. And it will not. Sand on the floor. Mary's done a nice job of taking care of the basketball, too. Only three turnovers. Their big thing has been struggling shooting the basketball. They also are not a great rebounding team, but it really hasn't hurt them too badly here yet this afternoon. Nascimento lost the ball, picked it back up. Cassidy Geddes, look at the freshman Mac with a quick move and nails the three. Out of famous Newton Conover High School down in Hickory, North Carolina. Now she told Coach E one time, he said, I don't think I'm ever going to have a bad day. And I kind of have that mindset. As Coach E said, it's typical for a, maybe a freshman, but right there hitting a big shot to tie this ball game up against the number 15 team in the country. We Mary showed a little zone action that time. Gaddis trying to take the lead. Wenzel's right there. Cross court heave to Wenzel. Another air ball for the Hokies. Virginia Tech has just hit one three so far. They are one for 14 from beyond the perimeter. And again, I don't, I don't remember any that were contested necessarily either. No. Tech has created good shots, good looks. Now Cemento can't get the roll, but she'll go to the line again. Made a great move to get to the rim, missed the layup, but got the rebound and put it back up and goes to the free throw line. Stays tied here, 19-19 in the second quarter. One so far here in the first half. Yeah, like you mentioned, coming off of a great game, a great shooting game in particular at Rutgers, where they had a very comfortable win for Coach Brooks' 500th win. He, he's not thinking about that right now because they are really struggling, one for 14. And again, I don't, I don't remember one that he would be upset with that they took. They're getting good looks. They're just not... Not quite focused enough to knock these things down. Well, Liz Kitley has also been in a pretty tough situation, Matt, because Kitley has been double teamed nearly every time she's had the ball. She's got eight points and seven rebounds, but it has been a battle to get any of those. Well, Nascimento's day continues now with 15 points. Only two other players have scored for William & Mary, Kayla Rolf and Cassidy Geddes, who hit a three. In and out. Yeah. Coach E talked about Nascimento and how much better she could get. Well, we're seeing it, you know, in real time here this afternoon in Blacksburg. He has taken over for William and Mary. Hokies just down by one. Trying to take the lead, and the three-point struggles continue for Virginia Tech. Here's Eck trying to curb those, and Liz Kitley's right there. Again, Kenny Brooks drew up that play against the zone, got a wide open look. Liz Kitley tracked it down and was rewarded with the offensive rebound, if you will. Inside of Nasa Mento, layup doesn't go. Good help right there contesting that shot. Nasa Mento got loose on the back cut again. Had a pretty good look at it, but Eck contested it just enough. Kitley off of the deck, muscling her way to a basket. Yeah, Beckwith got up on her, bodied her up, but 
Liz Kittley took her time, got to the other side of the rim, and laid it up. And so the battle will be Kittley and Beckwith for most of this game. Nyla Young still dealing with the effects of that illness. She did start, but hasn't gotten a lot of minutes for William & Mary so far. Beckwith is actually a, a better matchup size-wise. Samuel pulls down the air ball. Double dribble. Yep. Yeah, double dribble. Turnover for Virginia Tech before they got into the front court. Samuel did a nice job of tracking that rebound down, but uh, just kind of a little careless with the ball there, trying to get it to the guard. Foul called. So that goes on King, her second. Kate Carlson, another freshman out of Virginia Beach. Bring it in to Geddes, and the freshman knocks it down again. Good execution right there. Pretty simple cut off of a double screen there at the elbow. Geddes caught it in rhythm. And the freshman, not bashful for a freshman, right? Already hit a three. Now gets the try back within one against the number 15 team in the land. Overhead pass, back down low. Can't go. Virginia Tech hasn't really slowed it down that much, Mac. A lot of these passes are just such quick release in this offense. And, and that time again, Beckwith did a good job of contesting the shot. And William Mary not allowing the second shot. Gabe Carlson to the glass and takes the lead. These freshmen are not having any problem playing against the number 15 team in the country. There's Amor on a crossover. Here comes Kitley, makes a couple of steps and finds the boot. Yeah, that time going up against Cauley, they got switched inside. And again, Kitley is, is she's got 14 points and nine rebounds, but she has had to work like crazy to get that done. Foul called on Georgia Amor. Yes, Karis Baker runs in. And it stayed a tight game. William and Mary led at the end of the first quarter, 14-13. As Virginia Tech, the story of this ball game for the Hokies, they have been unable to hit the three. One for 16. Good fake by Geddes, but gets blocked. Kate Moore with her ninth block of the year at only eight in her whole career. Makes it over the pass on the other end. Karis Baker scrambles to find the basketball. And Mary doing a nice job of hustling, recovering. Another missed three for the Hokies with just a minute left to go in the second quarter. Kate Carlson can't get the friendly bounce. And there's going to be a foul on Anai Cauley. And for the junior for the Tribe, she's wanted that one to be called on Liz Kittley. Yeah, Coach E arguing about that, but you can't violate the cone. And I think that's what they're going to call right here. See how close up she gets? Yeah, once you, once you violate that straight up space, The dribble returns Samuel. Good on another three. And, and some of these haven't been close like that no. one. Not a terrible look either. No, again, yeah, there, there was a little bit of contesting of the shot right there, but not much. We Mary scored at the end of the clock in the first quarter. And it was done by Nascimento. Will she be the one to pull the trigger again for William and Mary? Pretty good chance. Stead throws the ball away. Clock running down. Amor to the hoop. That feels like such a big basket for Virginia Tech, who struggled so much there in the first half. Comes away with Glad to have you along for the ride before the Tribe and the Hokies. Game one of a doubleheader here in Blacksburg with the men taking on American right after this.
I look for a different Georgia Amore in this half. Still quick passes for the Hokies. Another turnover, not what Kenny Brooks and company wanted right out of the gates. Swatted away by Mishaw. Nascimento looking for help on a screen. Georgia Amor making her work for it. Rolf trying to step her way to the hoop, comes up empty. And there it is, Liz Kitley pulls down the rebound, and there is a turnover. Nascimento to the hoop, and her night continues. Play with so much confidence. Just the opposite of what's going on on the other end for Virginia Tech. A bit unceremonious there for Liz Kintley getting that rebound, but that was it. She is now the all-time leader in rebounds of Virginia Tech women's basketball history, passing Reagan McGarity, who is also the ACC leader. Trying to find an assist here, and Matilda Eck trying to heat back up for Virginia Tech, coming off of a 25-point performance in Piscataway. Say that three times fast, by the way, Mac. But <laughs> that was impressive once. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my resume. But meanwhile, Virginia Tech up by four. Another board for Kitley. And that's what Virginia Tech does. Kick it into Liz Kitley, kick it out for a wide-open shot. Stay with the Hokies. So Liz Kentley, a career that started here back in 2019, that first season that was ended before the Hokies could make it to the NCAA tournament. Just past Hokie great Reagan McGarity, who had a career 12.99 as far as rebounds go. So a congratulations to Liz Kentley, who owns almost every record for Virginia Tech. Dribbling inside, another step, and another rebound. Okay. Kidley, we talk about points, rebounds, block shots, assists, but I think the biggest record she owns is most wins. Yeah, Kitley got here right at the turn of big events for this program. Virginia Tech would have gotten to the NCAA tournament her freshman season. Her and Kayla King, part of that freshman class, and last year bringing home an ACC tournament and a Final Four banner as well. But now in a dogfight in the last non-conference game of the season. Good job against the athletic Frisbee Smith by Matilda Eck. Shot clock running down to two. McKeska got away with a walk there. And that is a shot clock shot violation. violation. So a defensive stance for Virginia Tech getting the local crowd into it. And I'm sure Kenny Brooks would like to see the offense get jump started by good defensive possessions. There's Kitley around two defenders. Steps with the left hand. No good on the layup. Rebound for Rolf. Cemento. That was a prayer of a layup that Kitley was right under. Amor, what a dribble from the elbow. Yeah, shot Kitley makes a high percentage of the time. Now Cemento now six for 17. It's more in keeping with her yearly average where she shoots 34% from the field. That average is just around 13 points per game. She's got 17 already. Risby Smith blocked by a full palm of Kitley. Second number 35, Anahi Collins. And number one. Hanging in there, only four down. Beats Eck on the dribble. But how many of those has Kitley erased in her career? She has been able to keep Virginia Tech up in this game. That was a rush shot by the freshman. And now William and Mary, much to the frustration of this Virginia Tech team, we get another chance here after that tough shot. And an offensive foul. Georgia Amor falling to the floor and forces the turnover. 
Peskin got a little too aggressive with the shoulder. Watch this. That sort of textbook right there. Outside of the circle, did not have to hesitate at all for that whistle to be blown. And here's Olivia Samuel. Amor has struggled on the offensive end. Maybe taking a charge and again making some defensive plays. Maybe that'll get her going on the off, on the other end of the floor. Amor's got, ball. Right, Amor's got six points on two of ten. Hokies have hit, just hit two threes. That one from Matilda Eck improved the Hokies to two for 20. Pass inside to Liz Kitley. Backs her way in. Offensive rebound for Olivia Samuel, who's had a bit of a quiet afternoon after a great time up in New Jersey. Zaymour finds Kitley. You know, the chemistry was there. That was a good play. Yeah, that's something that Kenny Brooks works on with those two almost on a daily basis. He's got a lot of two-man games to take advantage of when they get the right matchups. And yeah, now Kitley has 16 and 16. Got a hand in there, and now he Colley misses. Colley's really good at that drive, ripping through and driving into the hole to transfer from Villanova. William and Mary has kept this game close. Coming in here with an attitude of having nothing to lose. It's Matilda Eck. Mid off on the tray. And that's a good baseline drift you see Virginia Tech use so many times. Driving it from one baseline, throwing it to the corner on the other side. High screen, Amor. Samuel cleans it up for the Hokies. Timeout called by William and Mary. Virginia Tech with its largest lead, 34-26 after the timeout of the Tribe. Added another record to her storied career at Virginia Tech. Pulled down her 1,300th rebound, which made her the ACC all-time leader, as well as the Virginia Tech all-time leader in rebounds, because Reagan McGarity, the former Hokie, was the previous holder of that record. And, well, Mac, we've made the joke earlier on this season that every game for Virginia Tech women's basketball, it seems like you have to build in a ceremonial ball presentation because someone just broke another record. There's one for Liz Kitley as well. Yeah, it's, it's been incredible. And, you know, we talked about Kenny Brooks a lot. And the most amazing stat of all is every single season they have improved. You know, that, that's, that doesn't happen in coaching. It's happened with this core cast of characters for Kenny Brooks, Kayla King, Georgia Amor, and Liz Kitley. Could it be the last ride this year? for all three of them. Yes, we'll have to see if Georgia Amor, it's a decision to make at the end of the season, but for Kitley and King, this is it for them and having a ton of decisions to make here at the end of the season. 34-26 brings us to another break, still an eight point lead. Hokies enjoying an eight point lead in this one, 34-26, but even though these are opponents today, Coach E and Olivia Samuel had a connection before they met up here in Castle today. More on that, we have Kendall Williams. Kendall? Thanks, Bailey. Yeah, guys, we always love to see the connections between players and staff on opposing teams. And the one with Olivia Samuel and Coach E from William & Mary, it's a pretty neat one. Coach E rec recruited Olivia back when she was on staff at Wake Forest and when Olivia was going through her recruiting process. When we talked to Coach E, she said she absolutely loved the Samuel family and nothing but great things to say about Olivia as a player and a person. Guys? Yeah, thanks, Kendall. Olivia Samuel making some contributions today on the rebounding end. Virginia Tech has been ripping down the boards here so far today. Kayla King gives the Hokies a double-digit lead, 37-26. If I had a dollar for every time Virginia Tech scored after a timeout, I would be pretty wealthy. <laughs> Another perfect play drawn up there as the Hokies 
And a bit of a spark here. Only led by three at half. It was 27-24. And Tech has held William & Mary to just two points in the third. And the rebound for Kitley almost had it. Swats it out of bounds instead. So, it will stay with William & Mary. Watch that staggered screen. Kayla King has made so many from that spot. Massimento now has 19 for William & Mary. Approaching her career high. And she just had an eight point game against Longwood. Really leading the way so far for William & Mary. Kitley working on Beckwith and her great day continues. Yeah, the size advantage has been the saving grace for the Hokies. Well, Liz Kidley's been able to put together an 18 and 16 day despite Virginia Tech being so cold from beyond the arc. Kitley has been able to get it done. Final two minutes here of the third quarter and a defensive stance for Virginia Tech will Virginia Tech have a foul to go along with it. Kate Carlson has come in a couple different times in each half and uh, driven the basketball. That time she got by Karis Baker, the freshman. A couple of freshmen going against each other. The freshman from Virginia Beach. Trying to get this one back into single digits. He does almost there to make it a 10-point game. Really good free throw shooter, 90% on the year. Big time high school score, Catholic. Now both. So back to single digits, 39-30. Now this is something that William & Mary's done quite a bit, pick up full court, but the, didn't do that against Virginia Tech today. Another bounce inside for Liz Kitley. Here comes the double team. Samuel wanted the ball off of that double team left wide open, but a foul called anyway on William & Mary. William Mary's done a pretty good job against Virginia Tech on these baseline out of bounds. Gave up the three to King the last time. And now Kitley with a quick shot off of the baseline. Offensive board, and a second try in this possession will go to the line. See if they call that on the floor or a shooting foul. On the floor. And yeah, stay on the floor. Get another chance at that baseline out of bounds. Three on the way. Georgia Amor able to sink her first of the afternoon. I gotta find some way to get paid for those. <laughs> well, big They're three. easy to predict. Right. Somehow not easy to stop. Geddes misses the three. Samuel with another rebound. And for Olivia Samuel, make that nine rebounds on the day. Karis Baker left wide open. Hokey starting to get hot. A fist pump from everyone on the floor for Virginia Tech. A 15 point lead. Kidley's third, Kidley's third assist, throwing it back out of the post. Foul called on Virginia Tech, and Kayla King seems frustrated with that. Only really frustrated for just a moment. Well, you saw there off of that three from Karis Baker, a little bit more energy from Virginia Tech. And of course, Coach E, her husband, actually coached Karis Baker, along with a couple other freshmen from Virginia Tech in the old EYBL, little travel basketball. And Clara Strack and Mackenzie Nelson on that team as well. There's a three to answer for the tribe. Nascimento. Twenty-two points for Bella Nascimento, making this one interesting. As Georgia Amor tries to milk the clock down to the final moments of the third quarter. I'll call down low. Shot 
Shot clock now off. Let's see what Karis Baker can do. Get a look at this, Mac. Just one dribble, like hits a free throw. It. I like very. She's got places to be. Hey, rhythm. Shooter, shooters have their own peculiarities, and I like that one. Don't that think so about quick. it. Quick, knock it down. Fourteen-point lead for Tech. Nascimento gets the screen. Now to a double. Feed down low. A shot. Even if it would have fell, would not count. Hokey. It is the right word for the entire league. So many ranked teams and so many teams receiving votes that could get ranked. Hokey's able to hit a few threes there in that third quarter to jump the lead up to double digits at 14. Tech led by as much as 15. As for William & Mary, also CAA play is on the horizon. They gotta go to New Jersey. And look at that break, Mac. They don't play again until January 5th. Yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad, but you do have time to tweak things, put some wrinkles in, and Coach E was talking about that. And, uh, and of course, I think they've gained some confidence here this afternoon, no matter what happens for the rest of this game. Coach E did say, the goal of this game, I wanted my players to go back home on the break and think about what they did well and what they didn't do well against a top 20 team in the country. Now they've kept Virginia Tech pretty honest as a whole here today. Yeah, they, they've battled really hard and uh, you know, I, I think pretty much played better than they expected or more competitively than they expected, I would think, anyway based on what how they have played coming into the game. But they really played a good first half, and most of it on the defensive end. Offensively, they struggled other than Nas Nascimento, who's been just outstanding. Nascimento led the way and is currently leading the way as 22 of William and Mary's 33 points. We married a little bit of a scramble defense, trapping some, trying to force the issue. Virginia Tech has slowed down the shot clock a bit. And a whistle foul called on William and Mary. Yeah, Cauley down low. Again, giving away six inches to Kitley. She was just wrestling down there, doing what she could to keep Kitley from getting the basketball. And off right back to Amor. Harris Baker wide open. Now this freshman. Got to watch out for her the next few years, Mac, but especially already got to watch out for her now. Oh, uh, and again, that, that was a set play. King, instead of coming to the top, curled, and Baker popped back out. She was the second option and was wide open. And the double figures, the freshman from Connecticut. Holly wants some help. Finally gets it, Nascimento. Shot clock at five. And Karis Baker was right under it. Good job by Kayla King that time. Here's Baker, a heat check. She's still hot. Timeout called by William and Mary. 55-33, 13 points for Karis Baker. You know how you know you've got a really good point guard when she gets just as excited over an assist as she does with a basket. What a big three. Get another look, Mac. The dribble handoff and knock the bottom out, Karis Baker. Threes, including two for two here in the fourth quarter. And you see a lot of different ways to do it. Baseline out of bounds, the second option off of a baseline out of bounds, and then in transition, which is probably the second best way to shoot a three other than into the paint and back out. Karis Baker now with 13 points for the Hokies. Take a look at that. One for 18 in the first half. It was 27-24 at the end of the first half, and the bank was open for Cauley there to get William & Mary back on the board. Yeah, Cauley gave it the eye roll, but it still counted. So a 20-point lead for Virginia Tech. Heating back up from beyond the arc, and multiple characters involved in this. This kit lead. Primary leader on the floor right now for Tech. 20 points, ton of rebounds as well. In and out there. 
every year she's gotten better at something. You know, she's so good at the mid range, so skilled, and at six six, there's just no real answer for her. Dennis goes to the floor and a foul called on Tech. Virginia Tech foul number twenty-two. Still with Kitley. He's got that size and the mid range. Do have to see what's going to happen for another year of ACC play. With her being such a stalwart in the Virginia Tech lineup, there is a ton of film to work on against an ACC, a very loaded ACC schedule. Meanwhile, Sunny, she's put together a really solid day off the glass. Yeah, been pretty good defensively, been very good at rebounding the basketball. Fans wanted that to count. Got some style points for Amor. Yeah, it was still impressive. But, uh, but <laughs> no, it was well after the whistle. Monkey <laughs> slowing it down with Amor commanding the offense. Movement for Tech has to be started by Amor here. Mid-range. Samuel got the board. Possession arrow sends the ball back to William and Mary. Now with 11 rebounds. Samuel had 11 rebounds against Rutgers as well to go along with 18 points. So back-to-back -back games for the Wake Forest transfer with 11 boards. Two transfers, Sumwell and Eck, had great games at Rutgers. That's what's been interesting about this non-conference play for Virginia Tech. You have some games where you know, somebody will light it up, like Matilda Eck, who had 25 points. And well, Eck's been pretty quiet today. And Sumuel, who had a great game against Rutgers, had a great game against Tulane down in the Cayman Islands. She's had some quiet games as well. Yeah, it's been somebody different every night. And Samuel with 18 and Matilda Eck with seven threes. Career high in front of a crowd with a lot of Tech fans in Piscataway, New Jersey. That's kind of, the, those are the numbers that Kenny Brooks ex expected when he went to the portal for those two. Bouncing to Kitley, double team comes. Of the line. Well, Kitley already at the line today, two for two. Gonna make it 22 points. Well, a bit of an odd game for Virginia Tech that has ebbed and flowed, but in the second half, the Hokies have looked a little bit more consistent, a bit more impressive shooting wise. free throw. We talked with Coach Brooks right before halftime. He said this team is not focused. And what do you think he said to him there in that locker room, Matt? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. This is, this is going over the public airwaves. I'm pretty sure we can't explain what he said there, but I, think he, for a I think he challenged these young ladies pretty hard. Here comes Geddes with a streak right to the square. Another impressive freshman for Coach E. Coach, he lost the two best players from last year's team, 90% of their scoring, and they won 18 games in her first season there. Had a really good year, and uh, I really didn't know what to expect for this season with so many newcomers, but uh, uh, I tell you what now, they play like they, they are tonight. Uh, they, they still are struggling scoring the basketball, but, uh, but they're playing hard, playing physically, really competing. They could be a factor in the CAA. CAA play starting for them, like we said, January 5th. And another challenge to really go through for Coach E. This is just her second season at William & Mary as the head coach. And we really haven't seen their best player, Nyla Young, hardly at all. Under the weather, like we talked about, tried to play a little bit in the first half, but just not herself. And her lack of size in the post won't be as big a factor in the CAA as it was here tonight. Dribbling inside, lost at Carlson. 
Stays with William and Mary. And picked away. Here comes Amor and Wenzel. The feed to the freshman. And one. She is just as excited as if she had dumped it. Well, maybe not. <laughs> what a feed. Upperclassman to the underclassman with a left hand. The no look and Wenzel turned it up. Very athletic play right there. Ran the floor hard and used that left hand to get it up on the rim. Yeah, look was, at the bench. Yeah, there was no doubt she got fouled there. Physical play. And the freshman from San Antonio able to knock it down. All right, Mac, you, you said off camera earlier, Hokies, if they score 75 points, there's a free Bojangles biscuit here in the New River Valley. So we called it, it's a biscuit watch, not a biscuit warning. Right. Potentially right. five five minutes to go here. Can they eclipse 75 points? I, or do you have to pay for breakfast? I think that goes down. That was a big step right there. Timeout called by William & Mary. Georgia Amor hits another three for the Hokies. Brings us to yet another break, 64-39. Welcome back, everybody. 64-39. William & Mary call it a timeout after Georgia Amor hit her second three of the afternoon. First game of a basketball doubleheader. Hokies taking on the Tribe here. And Mike Young in Virginia Tech men's basketball after this. Coming up on the ACC Network Extra. Nice Here's, day. Let's play two. Yeah, let's absolutely. And well, let's call two. Four and a half minutes. Hokies only scored 27 points in the first half. That was the lowest amount they had scored in a half all season. Now have an 8-0 run here. Make it 64-39. Another foul call. So now five for Beckwith. Her day is done. Still a decent matchup today between her and Liz Kitley. Knew that was going to be tough all the way as Madison McGee checks in. And you got to give it to William and Mary, even though this has gone a bit south for them here in the second half. You could not take away any of the fight of this team from the CAA. No, they've played hard from the get-go. Had some success. Certainly had Virginia Tech on their heels on both ends of the floor. But a dance gets blocked. <laughs> Namor has played a ton of minutes for Virginia Tech so far in this one. Over 34 for the point guard from Australia. Loose pass. Here comes Carlson. And Georgia Amor, the defensive effort, breaking up that fast break. Yeah, really nice play. I think Amor thought she had knocked it off the offensive player there, too. But William Mary, ball on the baseline. So Liz Kitley going to the bench. And a bit of an ovation from Virginia Tech fans. Yeah, I doubt we see her anymore. 23 points, 17 rebounds, and had to work for every single one of those. And the ACC's all-time leading rebounder. She needed 13 to get to that here today, and she got that very quickly into the third quarter. Already had a double-double in the first half. Kitley family looking on. They're here every game. Doesn't matter where you're at. Blacksburg, Piscataway, Chapel Hill. Always in that spot as well. There's Wenzel. Down into the freshman, Clara Strack. Carl. 
Carlson. Kayla King wide open. Yes. Warning. So, biscuit warning. Just got a buzz on her phone. It's a biscuit warning. 69-39 Hokies up by 30. Samaya Suffren ready to run in for Virginia Tech. And Georgia Amor's night is done. 12.7 assists, five rebounds. This has been the most productive quarter for the Hokies on the score sheet so far. 22 to six, they've outscored the Tribe here in the fourth. Geddes, good pass, Carlson lost it. Strack fought and wins that battle. King thought about it. And suffering freshman who's gotten a good amount of playing time here goes to the glass, misses. Hokie stay with it. Carly Wenzel puts it up for two. Here comes Karis Baker as well. Ruthie Montella. Ruthie Montella, the junior from Illinois. Also coming in for William and Mary. Kayla King done for the evening. So King, Amor, and Kitley. Likely done with some live basketball here for the next 10 days before ACC play starts on New Year's Eve. Another block. Yeah, that's a foul, actually. Yeah, Samuel had the block, but Claire Strack had the foul. So here comes McGee. He gets on the board. William and Mary only down by three here at halftime and now making it a 30-point game. Got some things to work on, especially maybe some scoring diversity from somebody outside of Nascimento at 22 for William and Mary today. And still a few things to be proud of that play uh, on a team that played the defending ACC champions very hard in their own building. Strack, the freshman center, joining the three party. Tech's ninth three of the second half. They're nine for 11, Mac. That's, yeah, that, that, whatever he said got him focused, right? Kenny Brooks, that's how you win 500 games. Foul called on Tech. That was not a desperation three either. No, that was Strack early can really, in the She can really possession. shoot the basketball. Fans, she is a legitimate three-point threat, and that's going to make her really difficult to guard, no matter whether she's a stretch four or playing down low. Carlson. Dances away to Suffren. Harley Wenzel, a bounce to Strack. Carlson again to the line for the freshman. Yeah, Carlson's been impressive. She, she has driven the basketball by about everybody who's guarded her. Got to the free throw line. At the line number 24, Nick Carlson, shooting two. So you hear the crowd, Mac. Did you text the Castle Guard and tell them to start chanting, we want biscuits? I've been holding a picture up on my phone <laughs> for the folks behind me started it. <laughs> We're trending. <laughs> Just one more point. So 50 seconds, a little under that. Junior Tech team that 
fought hard here in the second half. They scored 27 in the fourth quarter alone so far. That's an offensive foul. Which at this point, we don't know if the crowd is booing the call or the <laughs> fact that they didn't get the 75th point so far. Well, sausage biscuits in jeopardy. Not, not feeling good about oh, this. Oh, no. <laughs> But Coach E is feeling pretty good about the first half. Coach Brooks is feeling pretty good about the second half. And a foul There's the called. foul. So that does send Virginia Tech to the line here. And the eyes of Hokie Nation are on Samaya suffering. And she, she's five out of eight on the year. And they weren't going to get a shot up because they were going to hold the ball because the shot clock was off. So we have a turning point in the game. At least as it relates to breakfast. <laughs> there are a lot of hungry folks here that think it's bow time. So there it is. They show it up on the video board. A free sausage biscuit for all these hungry folks. And it, it did look a bit dire there at, at halftime when it was 27-24. But how this game turned for Virginia Tech. 76-43 as it stands now. And it looks like that will... Almost be it. Virginia Tech ball. So, what a second half for Virginia Tech. Hokies improved to nine and two, finishing off the non-conference slate seven games above 500. And look at that, Mac, defending the castle 16 straight times. Yeah, and 